Okay, hello Year 10. Welcome to another home learning video. Now, before we start the lesson, I just wanted to let you know a couple of things. First thing is, well done to those of you who have actually engaged in these videos. I can see a lot of you have at least attempted to watch them. I can see some of you have actually attempted some of the questions and I can see some very good scores on Frog. Um, there will be times when it will get hard, so please let me know if you are finding it hard so I can look at it and see how I can improve these videos just to help you learn a little bit better. Um, uh, if there are any things that do come hard, what you can do as well is make sure that you pause the video, you can go back, look at it again, maybe write down the example again and just, just keep trying really, okay? That's, that's the key. I don't expect you to understand something first time, but I do have to expose you to something very difficult because if I kept things easy all the time, then everybody will be doing it, okay? So please make sure that we... Um, we just uh, just do our best, really. Keep persevering. You can do it. I've seen people do it in class. You know, your maths has really come a long way for those of you I teach. So um, let's just persevere, okay? Right, so let's grab a pen, grab a pencil, grab our pads, and let's start, uh, start a lesson. So let's look at our learning objectives. So learning objective one, number one, we're going to review areas of triangles and rectangles. Learning objective number two, we're going to be calculating areas of parallelograms. And learning objective number three, we'll be calculating missing lengths of an, of an area of a parallelogram. Okay. Right, can we pause the video and have a go at this do now task, please? Okay, brilliant. Welcome back. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through three of these questions with you. Um, now, if we look at the first one where you have 7 times 3 and 0 0.7 times uh, 0 0.3. Well, we know that 7 times 3 is 21, okay? So all we need to do is use this as a clue to answer the second question, all right? So we take the way the method I use is to take out the decimals, all right? So to get 0 0.7 into 7, I times by 10. That gives us 7. To make 0 0.3 into 3, we have to times by 10. So that would give be 7 times 3, okay? And we know that that's 21. So as our answer will be a decimal answer, all right, because I've multiplied by 2 lots of 10, I'm going to divide by 2 lots of 10. So divide that by 2 lots of 10. I'm going to stick the 0 just before the 2, okay? So the answer is... 0 0.21. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. Let's go ahead and look at the area of the triangle. Okay, so the area is base times height, and then you halve it. So to find the area, we just do 16 times 10, and then you divide that by 2. 16 times 10 is 160. Divide that by 2. The area is 80 centimetres squared. As 16 divided by 2 is 8. Okay. Just remember, you can also use the bus stop method for this. Okay. Right. Another way to calculate the area is to do a half times the base times the height. Okay. So if we do area is a half times 16 times, might be able to squeeze it on, 10, okay? So if you half 16, you should get an answer of 8. And 8 times 10 would be 80, all right? So that's another way you can think about it. Right, for this question, a little bit tricky. So we've got a rectangle, which I'll call A, and a triangle called B, okay? So let's just do our rectangle first, which is 13 by 5. Now the area of that would just be 13 times 5, okay? Now if you're not sure how to do that in your head, you can also use... The Chinese method. 
like that. You can pause the video at this point and try and see if you can have a go at that, okay? If not, I'll just go for it. So five times one would be five. So put together a zero here and a five there. And three times five would give you 15, okay? So when we add these up, that's going to give you 5, 5 plus 1 is 6, okay? So 5 times 13 is 65. Now, to work out the area of the triangle, if you look along, the base of this rectangle is, of this triangle, sorry, is the same as the base of the rectangle. So that's going to be 13, okay? Now the height, well, if we know the distance from this point to this point is five centimeters and the distance of the whole thing is 10 centimeters, all we need to do is see what we need to add to five to make 10. So 10 take away five is just five. Okay. So the area will be 5 times 13, divide that by 2. We So we basically need to do 65 halved, okay? I'll give you a little trick, okay? If we were to do 64 divided by 2, that would just be 32, okay? But because we're doing 65 divided by 2, 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5. So you could just write 32... 0.5, okay, centimetres squared. Okay? So you just do 64 divided by 2 and then stick a 0.5 on the end, okay? Right, so let's look at the, uh, the answers for the first one. Uh, so for part A, the area of this rectangle is 140 centimetres squared and the perimeter of it is 48 centimetres, okay? Right, well done for getting that right. Okay, so let's have our date and title for today, please. So we're looking at area of parallelograms. This should be a nice lesson. And I'll let you adjust the date because I can understand that that's not the correct date, okay? Right, so the key words we're looking at today is area. So this is what we've looked at, is the amount of space inside the boundary of a 2D shape, and these are our measurements that we use. Perpendicular is quite important because perpendicular means this, okay? So it's two lines that meet at right angles, okay? If you have something like this, this is not perpendicular because it's slanted, okay? And so if we look at the parallelogram here, let's look at our, property, our properties of it, okay? So <clears throat> what do you think the properties are? You can pause the video and have a think. Now, what you might recognise is that opposite sides are parallel, okay? So these, this line and this line will never meet, and this line and this line will never meet, okay? So you've got two pairs of lines that will uh, never meet, okay? Um, you've also got a line of, well, you have not You have got no lines of symmetry, sorry, because obviously you can't divide it into diagonals, but most importantly, you haven't got 90 degrees on each side, okay? So it's not like a rectangle, all right? So now to find the area of it, what we imagine is this. So let's imagine a rectangle like this. Pause the video and you might want to copy this down and write the area on the inside. Good. So if you found the area, we know the area is just base times height, which is 24 centimetres squared. Okay, just 6 times 4. Okay. Now, what we're going to look at is this. Now, what happens... If we take a little bit of the parallelogram, like this, 
of this rectangle. We're going to take that aside. Remember, the area is still 24, so we're going to cut that off. If I were to add these two shapes together, that's still 24. And I'm going to stick it on the end so I make the parallelogram, okay? Now, what you need to recognize is that the height of this parallelogram, the vertical height, is still 4 centimeters, okay? So if I do 6 times 4, that would give us 24 centimeters squared. OK, so the area of this parallelogram would be the same as the area of this rectangle. OK, all we've done is we've cut out this bit and stuck it on the end in a slanted way. All right. So now we've got the height, which is up and down, OK, which is vertical. OK, so the formula that we need is this so the area of a parallelogram is base times your perpendicular height okay it's very important guys that we copy this example okay brilliant now let's go on to our first example so can we copy this down please right now with this one it's pretty simple okay the base is 5 and the height is going to be 4, okay? So the area is 5 times 4, which is 20 centimetres squared, okay? And I'll double underline that. So let's copy this down, please. Brilliant. So let's go on to the second question. I'd like you to find the area of this, please. OK, so the area of this shape, sorry, should be 6 times 8, which is 48 centimetres squared. OK, so well done if you got that. Right, so example number two, can we copy this down, please? Right, when you get questions like this, you've got more than one side labelled, okay? So before we do this, let's just recognise that opposite sides will be the same in a parallelogram, just like it is in a rectangle. So that would be 9 and that would be 6, okay? Now, the base is 9, so my right angle will be here. Sorry, that's my two parallel lines. My base is 9 centimetres and my height is not 6 because 6 is slanted. My height is 5 centimetres, okay? So my area is just 9 times 5, just like I would find the area of a rectangle. It's 45 centimetres squared, okay? Underline that. Brilliant. So let's have a look at this question, please. So pause the video, have a go. OK, good. So what you should recognise is that the base is 8. And the height is 9. OK, so just imagine, oops, just imagine going along. So here's my two lines that meet at right angle, okay, the 8 is nearest to the 9, so they, the lines will kind of meet, okay. So the area is 8 times 9, which is 72 metres squared, okay. I've used metres because that's what the units are in, okay. All right, brilliant. So let's have a look at this, okay. So copy this example down, please. Right, so this time, this, um, this parallelogram has been tilted, okay? Um, so it's important that we recognise which is the base and which is the height, okay? Now, it's easiest probably to find the height first. We know that that is our height, okay? So our height is 6 centimetres. So to find the base, the base meets the height at right angles. So it's going to be this part here okay so the base is five centimeters so the area is base times height six times five which is 30 
centimetres squared. Okay? Brilliant. So let's have a go at this question, please. Okay, brilliant. Well done for pausing and having a go if you did that. Um, right, so what you would recognise is this, okay? The base is 8. The height is 7 centimetres. So the area is 8 times 7, which is 56 centimetres squared okay six is not a height because it's slanted okay right so let's have a go at this let's have a let's sorry let's um pause the video and copy down this question please and make sure we copy down the words okay so when we have worded question it's very important that we underline our key words okay it says the area of this parallelogram is 60 centimetres squared, okay? So we want to know what the length is, okay? So it's this point, it's this bit that we want to know, okay? All right, so if the area is base times height, then we know that if I were to, we know that if I were to do um, 10, my height is, sorry, my height is 10, OK, I'm going to ignore that 5. All right, we want to know what the base is. So 10 times something would give me 60, OK? So that something must be 60 divided by 10. So your base, I'll put B for short, is 60 divided by 10. And that's just 6 centimetres, OK? Brilliant. OK, so let's copy down. Let's have a go, sorry, at this question. All right, well done for having a go. Now, what you'll see is that the height is not put in. OK, this is this can be quite tricky. All right. Um, so let's just imagine. Let's just say that the height of this parallelogram. Is. This bit here. OK. So if we do 36, so base times height would be 36 centimetres squared. OK. We know the base is 6. A so 6 times something will give us 36. So therefore your height is 36 divided by 6, opposite of times is divide, so that would give you 36 divided by 6, that's just 6 centimetres, okay, that one is quite tricky because it's not always obvious which is the height, okay, but the longest side would be the base. Right, so those are the different types of questions you can get, all right, so your next set of questions will be here. So pause the video and let's have a go at these questions, please. Um, for the ones with decimals or harder numbers, you're free to use a calculator, OK? If you want to challenge yourself, then you don't have to use a calculator. OK, well done for having a go. Now I'd like you to try... So, sorry, before we do that, let's have a go at the answers. So looking at the answers, here we are. OK. So now let's have a go at the extension. Good. And let's now look at the values of x, OK? So your answers, the extensions are here. OK, so well done, guys. You're now ready to start the quiz on frog. Just remember... OK, um, to take your time with this. All right. These these next set of questions should be pretty straightforward for you to answer. I'm looking forward to see how many people can get 100 uh, 100 percent on this. OK, this one, sh you 